my friends, it's Miss Patty for story time. Our theme this week is about cats. So my friend Stripes says hello, and he wanted to be part of this because, you know, tigers are a kind of cat. Yeah. So maybe you don't have a tiger named Stripes at your house, but maybe you have a cat that has Stripes. Maybe you have a calico cat. Maybe you have a Mancoon cat. And I have a story about Mancoon cats today. So Tiger Stripes is going to have a seat. And we are going to get on with our story. This is the story of Katja the Windmill Cat by Gretchen Wolf. And you know, it's a true, it's based on a true story. So I think you will really like it. It's very, very interesting. And I'll remind you that Miss Patty only reads stories with a happy ending, but there is a little scary part in it. So hold on. Katja had an easy life. She lived with Nico the Miller in a Dutch village by the sea. That's across the ocean, you know. While Nico ground grain in his windmill, Katja chased mice up and down the ladders. She prowled, searching behind the sacks of grain and along beams dusty with flour. Every miller needs a cat like Katja, Nico told the villagers who came to buy his flour. At night, Katja slept on a soft pillow beside Nico. On Sundays, they walked along the dike that protected the village from the sea. Katja chased seagulls. Nico watched for storms. One morning, Nico didn't follow Katja to the mill. He put on his best suit and walked to town. In the evening, he came back with a young woman on his arm. She wore a fine dress and carried a bouquet of flowers. Nico carried a bright copper kettle, a bundle of dresses, and a brand new broom. It's a plain house, Lena. Nico said shyly. It's perfect, Lena said, just right for a miller and his wife. That night, when Katja jumped into bed, Lena lay on her pillow. Meow, whined Katja. Nico picked her up. Run along, Katja. Meow, insisted Katja. Nico closed the curtains around the bed. Complained Katja even louder. The curtains remained closed and Katja slept in the kitchen. Mm, something has changed. Nico has a wife. The next day, Lena began to sweep. She swept the house, she swept the path to the mill, she even swept flower dust from Nico when he came home at night. Take off your wooden shoes before you walk in the house, Lena scolded. Nico stepped out of his shoes and kissed her. He left a big white smudge on her cheek. Katja crept past them. She wouldn't let Lena sweep her, but Katja left a trail of white paw prints and Lena saw them. Shoo, Katja, she cried, you're too dusty. Life wasn't easy anymore. One day, Katja woke to the sound of sawing. I'm making a cradle, Nico said. Lena laid a soft quilt inside. That night, Katja jumped in the cradle and curled up on the quilt. Soon, a baby called Anaki was born in the little house by the windmill. She was small and pink, and she slept in the cradle. 
Katya didn't mind. There was room enough for both of them. But Lena said, shoo, Katya, you'll make Annika sneeze. Katya played with Annika when Lena wasn't looking. Katya batted the ribbons on the cradle. Annika waved her arms. Katya wriggled under the quilt. Annika kicked her legs. Katya jumped from side to side and set the cradle rocking. Annika giggled and Katya meowed. This was more fun than chasing mice. But when Lena heard them, she said, shoo, Katya, you'll tip over the cradle. Katya walked across the room and stopped by the door. Lena didn't call her back. So Katya left the house and moved to the windmill. She might be a little sad, don't you think? At night, she curled up on the empty flour sacks and dreamed of soft quilts. Nico brought her a dish of milk every evening. Come home, Katya, we miss you. Katya wouldn't go home with Nico, but sometimes when everyone was sleeping, she crept back home and gently rocked the cradle while Annika slept. One afternoon, dark clouds gathered overhead. The wind howled and rain pounded against the windmill. We've been through many storms, haven't we, Nico said, scratching Katja's head. Katja purred. The windmill sails whirled and the great millstones turned. I won't have a minute's rest till the wind dies down, Nico said. He had to keep grinding the grain between the millstones. If the stones rubbed together, the sparks could start a fire. Wow, that's a hard job. Katya rubbed against Nico's leg. She would work as long as he did. Nico hoisted heavy bags of grain to the top of the mill and watched the wheat pour down to the millstones. Katya ran up and down the ladder and round and round the mill. She looked for mice who might sneak in from the storm. All night long, the wind roared, the windmill shook, and the millstones ground, groaned. Mm. Sometimes big storms can be kind of scary, huh? Yeah. When morning finally came, the door flew open and Lena came in with a basket of bread and herring for Nico's breakfast. Katja dashed to the house to see Annika. A crowd of villagers ran down the road. <gasps> the dike has broken. The sea is flooding the town. Church bells clanged. Water rushed into the house. Katja jumped on Annika's cradle. Lena and Nico waded out of the mill as the cradle swept out of the house. Annika cried. Lena, I'll get the rowboat, yelled Nico. Katja and Annika raced through the flooded streets. Furniture, wagons, and even houses swirled by. Oh, dear. It's a terrible storm, isn't it? Some villagers stood on rooftops. Others climbed up the dike. There's a cradle. I pray there's no baby in it. It's sure to capsize. A wagon wheel whirled past and sent the cradle spinning. Look, there's Katja. It's Annika's cradle. The cradle tipped back and forth, but Katja jumped from side to side and kept Annika safe. See? Katja's a good kitty and is protecting the baby Annika. Yay for Katja. Finally, the cradle bumped against the dike. The rowboat bumped next to it. Dear Annika, cried Nico as he plucked her from the cradle. D 
darling Katja, cried Lena, hugging her tightly. Mew, said Katja. They're safe at last. Annika soon grew too big for her cradle. So Katja slept there on a soft quilt that Lena made just for her. Katja had a busy life. In the morning, she played with Annika. All day, she chased mice in the windmill. And when she came home at night, she always remembered to lick her paws before she stepped into the house. So this story is based on a true story. In a violent storm blew in from the North Sea in South Holland in 1421, and it flooded the small village. And it's the true story of that flood and a cat and a little baby lived through the terrible flood. The brave cat saved the baby. So isn't that a sweet story? I really like that. So I wanted to show you a little craft you can do, or you can come into the library and get one of our craft kits. This week, this is, do you recognize this special cat? That's right, Pete the cat and his groovy shoes. <laughs> so we have lots of Pete the Cat books and we have this special um, craft kit that you can pick up or you can draw your own Pete the Cat, use scissors. One of the fun things about this little craft is all the different shapes. We have a big rectangle, we have small rectangles for legs, we have his face, he has a half circle, and all kinds, his ears are like triangles. So those are all shapes you're probably familiar with. So that's Pete the cat, and he is a special cat. There are lots of stories about special cats that are quite famous, like the cat in the hat. You know about him, Dr. Seuss's great cat that we love. So this story is about my cat, Coon Cat. Maybe you're familiar with these special cats from Maine. They call them Maine Coon by Ferguson Fuller. My cat, Coon Cat. Hi, cat, Coon Cat. Heard you at the door. Brought a mouse to our new house. Did you live here before? Have you ever had a cat that wasn't yours come to your door? It happens sometimes. New cat, coon cat, do you need a home? Would you like to be with me or live free on your own? See that big bushy tail? That's what coon cats are famous for because they kind of look like a raccoon tail, don't they? Here, cat, coon cat, do you have a name? If I whistle, will you come? Are you wild or are you tame? What do you think? Morning cat, coon cat, hungry for a treat, bowl of milk, dish of fish. What do you like to eat? Noon cat, coon cat, lazy all the day, catching catnaps in the sun. Please wake up and play. S 
smooth cat, coon cat, very cool and classy. My kitten's name is Marmalade. She's a little sassy. Marmalade's a good name for her, isn't it? Shy cat, coon cat, this dog wants some fun. Bow, wow, wow, meow, meow. Wow, you better run. <laughs> Neighbor cat, coon cat, looks a lot like you. Henry is humongous. Is he a Maine coon too? Quiet cat, coon cat, through the field you creep, shadowing a dragonfly. Ready, set, leap. Do you think cats eat bugs in the wild, maybe? Wonder if they eat cicadas. Soft cat, coon cat, your fur is thick and warm, so you can play hide and seek outside when there's a storm. Yeah, animals have to find their special places to hide, even in the rain, don't they? Brave cat, coon cat, how you love the night. The crying loon, a bright full moon, Shadows in the light. Evening cat, coon cat, purring at my head. Be polite and try to sleep and you can share my bed. Tiger cat, how is that? Now you have a name. I've never had a friend like you. I'm so glad you came. My cat, coon cat, good night. So they've been around a long time. And some people believe that some, some men brought Maine Coon cats all the way to Marie Antoinette because she loved long haired cats. So that was pretty special. Thank you for listening. I hope you come in soon. And if you haven't joined our reading program, I hope you will because we have some fun prizes. Here's a squishy, feels very fun to play with, a good toy for in the car or our special jungle elephant, a nice stuffed little animal. So I hope to see you soon and that you have a lovely day and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.